everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to do a project I have been talking about a lot, and we are going to mix greens using the Paradise Fibers Acid Dye Collection to dye some fiber. Now, Paradise Fibers generously gave me their acid dyes to review and also gave me a lot of wonderful fiber. Uh, this video isn't sponsored, but I am a Paradise Fibers affiliate, and so if you want to learn more about anything I'm using in this video, I will have affiliate links down in the video description. If you watched my review, the one note about the actual colors was that the green was not really a true green. It was much more of a teal. And while it was a beautiful color, having a collection of 13 colors, having that true green was the only hole that's missing. But with two yellows, three blues, and a teal, and really even the orange, there are plenty of colors here for us to mix a wide variety of greens. And that is what we are going to do today. We are gonna mix a number of different greens and then we are gonna dye um, eight ounces of the Paradise Fibers undyed merino wool roving that I have here. I wanna take a quick moment to give a huge shout out and thank you to my lab partner today, Jeremy. Jeremy, thank you so much for being my lab partner and I hope you are really excited for a lot of green roving. I'm not necessarily gonna be making recipes for each of the color. I have to decide how I want to do this because this isn't gonna be just like a classic color mixing. Some extent of it will be done by feel to adjust colors as needed to get um, a variety of different green hues. But again, there are many colors here and so there's a lot of potential for this. So let me go play around with some markers. All right, I think I'm gonna start with five colors. The yellow, soft yellow, turquoise, blue, and then green. And we'll do one-to-one -one ratios of each of these more blue tone colors with each of these two yellows. And then I will have two other one ounce samples of the merino wool that I can use to mix uh, by feel any color that I feel might be mixing missing from this family. Because it's possible that some of these may end up feeling fairly similar to one another, uh, but that is okay. I think, you know, we'll see what kind of greens we can collect um, out of this really simple uh, grid here. For anyone wondering, one ounce of fiber is, it looks like about 28, 29 grams. And I'm curious, okay, these are all um, pretty close, within a couple grams of each other. And so therefore, uh, the depths of shade that we're gonna see aren't gonna be exact, uh, but uh, we should have uh, some reasonable comparisons between the colors we mix. There's a small chance I could regret this, but I think I actually want to pre-soak these a bit while they are still twisted up. That way I can keep them uh, separate pretty easily when we go to dye the yarn. So I'm not going to add some water here, and I'm just going to pour on about eight ounces of water. They're not going to be perfectly uh, saturated, there will likely be some dry patches in here, but logistically it'll make my life a little bit easier. So I'm going to let these sort of soak into the water and I'll come and press out air every so often until they are completely submerged. But I probably also will add a little bit more water on top, off camera. Wearing my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves, I measured out one gram of each of the five colors that I was going to be playing with today. And then I added 100 milliliters of hot tap water to the dye to create a mini 1% stock solution of each of the colors. Technically, the dye does add volume, so normally, if I was doing this correctly, I would dissolve the dye in water and then add water to bring it to a total volume of 100 milliliters, but since I'm dealing with five tiny samples here, I decided to just measure the amount of water I was gonna add to each one, so then we could start color mixing. So now we have our yellow, soft yellow, blue, turquoise, and green, and I have uh, six containers to start mixing. 
Five of them are glass containers and eventually uh, we will transfer the sixth and then seventh and eighth color into glass jars after we've finished heat setting uh, the first batch. But I figured this is a similar size container, so let's go with that. I added three cups of water to each of these jars and then I'm gonna add one tablespoon of white vinegar. So we are ready to go. And now for the color mixing. I want to add 15 milliliters of each color to each of the jars. So we're doing a one-to-one -one ratio to go for an approximate 1% depth of shade because 30 milliliters of 1% stock solution is 0.3 grams of dye and we have about 30 grams of fiber that will go into each jar. Okay, so that is our soft yellow. And now for our brighter yellow, which is just called yellow, but now you can really see the difference between those yellows. I considered going for orange um, as well, and I'm glad that I didn't because I think that the soft yellow does have some more of that reddish warmth to it, but I, I want to keep in more, like, we're going for green. We're gonna go see what greens we can get. So now I'm gonna go rinse out the syringes and we can do the other colors. All right, I am gonna start with blue, which I think at a one-to-one -one ratio should have the least impact and I think that you know if we're lucky it'll be teal is my feeling just because it is so deep a color already and then next we will use the turquoise which I mean I think even this this looks like it might be a really nice Oh my gosh, this color is called turquoise, and I just look and I'm like, oh, that looks like a really nice turquoise. But this one feels like a greener turquoise, but I don't think any of these colors are really going to feel that, quote, green. So now I need to rinse out the syringe again. Now, color theory and some of the triangle color mixing I've done in the past probably tells us that these four are not going to be that green, because in general, that one-to-one -one ratio isn't that green. But if we're starting with a teal color, this already has some yellow in it. So it's probably still gonna be fairly blue, but we're more likely to get to a green here. But I think overall, we're gonna need so much more yellow than green to make something that feels super green. So now let me get a spoon so we can mix these up a bit and see what the colors are like. I considered not checking what the colors are like at all um, in between, but realized that because I'm mixing these colors, I do need to rinse the spoon off, and so I might, actually I'm not seeing much on the towel. I realized that we should add the fiber here more than checking the color on our spoons and let that show us. Uh, how things have turned out uh, and then actually no I will dot the colors on a paper towel once we're done mixing just to see where we are and actually the water is looking like it could be great I mean I'm sure all of these are gonna be in a green well maybe not maybe I'm not sure <laughs> we'll see how similar they all are they might be more similar than I thought okay let's take a peek at these colors and I'm gonna just go for a dot okay they're pretty diluted so yeah it's gonna be hard I think to see the difference between them yeah right now dotted on paper they're all looking very 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 similar so it's hard to say and it's hard to see what that color looks like but let's go ahead and add roving to it and maybe that'll help us see more. Okay, let's start in the middle. Oh, that's a great green. It is bluish for sure. Bluish for sure, but I would call that 
greenish. Okay, that's the turquoise and the yellow. You know, sometimes not knowing what to expect can be hard. And so this, I mean, this is greenish. This actually reminds me a little bit of what the Paradise Fibers green itself looks like, um, which is much more of a deeper teal kind of color. But then I'm curious about this one. This is the one I'm the most curious about. Okay, undoing these fiber bundles isn't as hard as I originally thought. Ooh, okay, so this is the green plus the yellow and honestly, this color looks extraordinarily similar to that one. And I don't know how, given that these two colors over here are very, very different, but maybe it's just the yellow makes that little of an impact. I don't know. So those two feel similar to me, but let's see what this next row, see how we're doing. I mean, the soft yellow versus yellow is not seeming to have that much difference. I'm gonna really have to label things. I would say, in some respects, this maybe is a hair brighter than the soft yellow, and so maybe feels more forest green, maybe. You know, I think that if I was going by feel, we could have created some more diverse greens, but I am glad that we are testing this and seeing. Yeah, so the turquoise with either green has really done the best job. These two colors definitely, oh, they feel a hair different to me. Uh, and on the camera, I think you can see, like that's a hair brighter than this one. Feels a little bit more muted. But I really am curious to see how dry those might end up feeling. I'm gonna have to label these jars so I will be able to tell which one's which later on. Yeah, this one feels almost not quite mossy, but it definitely is a different, deeper green feeling than that one. But I guess it's like similar to that difference there. I'm really, really amazed that those ones feel so similar. This wasn't quite what I was expecting, but we do have some greens here, just maybe not an emerald green yet. Okay, so the more I look, like these two feel more different, but this is also a different kind of container. So maybe they're not that different. I don't really know, but let's go ahead and start getting ready to heat set as many of them as we can. I'm not sure how many of the jars I can fit into my uh, double boiler type setup. I don't know if I can fit five of these big jars. I might be able to, but also maybe not. No, I can only fit four. Well, that's fine, but is this one five? Yes, this is my backwards five, okay. I will save that and I will put four in. And now I'm gonna fill this pot with water so the water level's about right here and then start heating it up until we can get the water to start to clear in these jars. But I might need to add more acid after a little bit so we'll check in after it's been heating for about 20 minutes. My goal this time is to come up with two greens that feel less blue. So while we're waiting for jars, we have two containers with three cups of water and with uh, one tablespoon of white vinegar in each. Let's think about this. So for one of them, let's go ahead and get 20, five. We're gonna go for 25 milliliters of the yellow, yeah, 25 milliliters of just the yellow. And then, let's see out another, oh actually, for that little volume, let's get a new syringe. And then five 
milliliters of the green color. And let's see where this brings us compared to what we've done with some of the others. Okay, there we go. That gives us something that is a lot more grass um, green. But you can see, and I'm going to come with, go ahead and put the fiber in there. You can see that it still is like not that yellow of a green, even with a five to one ratio of the yellow to the green. So I wouldn't necessarily call this an emerald. I would call this an apple, an apple green, but it is absolutely more yellow than uh, some of the other ones that we have seen so far. So for this next one, I can't quite do the same because I don't think I have that much. We'll take some of the yellow off of our stick. I don't think I have that much of this left. Let's see how much yellow we have. Oh, I might. Oh, I might have 25 milliliters. Okay, that's 20 milliliters of yellow. And then, okay, so this is gonna be 28 milliliters of yellow. And we may end up doing even more turquoise, but let's start with just two milliliters of turquoise and see where this brings us especially compared to that one is this going to give us more of a yellow green let's see you can always remove the fiber and add more dye so that is an option as well if this is too similar to the other one but nope this gives us a beautiful yellow green so what are even the ratios here that i don't know but <laughs> you can see just how much more yellow we needed to get something this bright. And I feel like even though we were just going from mixing greens today, this entire project shows so much how having different primary blues in your collection can really, really be helpful. I think it would have been hard to create something this bright if we were just using that more true blue color. I think we were able to achieve this level of brightness because we had the turquoise blue versus the deeper blue and there's not very much red in here at all. So that is always something worth keeping in mind as you are picking your colors to start your collection. But anyway, uh, these four setups are going to have to hang tight while we wait for the others to finish up. But we do have some more dye left over, which I plan to use for another project. All right, let's check in on the fiber as we are nice and steamy. I have checked in before, and so this color is clear. This has a hint of some turquoise left. That one's looking clear, and this one's looking pretty clear. What's very interesting, and I don't think, because I'm expecting this to be pretty hot, the roving in all of them has sort of soaked up to the surface. Uh, let me set these aside for a moment, uh, and then I can show that a little bit better. So I am going to remove this and set this aside, turning off the heat. It's already looking like the fiber is starting to sink down a little bit, but it definitely rose to the surface. And I'm curious if we'll see, I don't want, I really don't want to manipulate it too much. Uh, I'm curious to see how much of a color difference we will see. Can I watch this one yet? Ooh, that one has a fair amount of color at the bottom. Let me see. Oh, they all do. Oh, shoot. The water near the top was clear, but that's because the fiber has to access the rest of the dye. Shoot. Interesting. Hopefully this isn't going to felt it by, like, pressing it into the dye more. Oh, shoot. There is... I was like, ooh, great. It is all cleared, but... 
I mean, I knew that one hadn't, but you can see that there's a lot of color down there at the bottom. And not just on that one, on the others as well. So, the heat is off, but I'm gonna go put this back into the pot uh, so it can keep getting some heat because clearly this is gonna take more time, unfortunately. The other thing we can do right now is add more acid. Uh, so let's add another two tablespoons of white vinegar to each. In that one, I think I see some breaking, which is cool. And while we're at it, I'm gonna go ahead and add two tablespoons of vinegar to the four samples we haven't started heating yet. Yeah, because that might help. And again, I hope I don't regret pressing, but I do want to distribute the acid a bit further in here, um, especially because if we've got like a very different color at the bottom of our jar. So it's possible that these colors will be uh, less even than the ones that have been sitting in with the dye for this whole period of time so far. But our heat is off. But the, the water in here is still really warm and that's gonna apply heat for a while. So I am gonna wait 30 more minutes and then we'll come back and see if the colors have cleared this time. All right, I just checked and it looks like we have more color in the one with the turquoise and then these other ones, though, I think are clear. So I am going to remove this uh, and take it to the sink. So now we're gonna need to let these cool. Now, as I said, this jar still has blue. That's that turquoise. But the others, yeah, the others are clear. So I wish what I really want, and maybe I'll let them cool for a minute, I want to be able to transfer uh, the fiber into another container so that way I can reuse these to uh, dye the rest of the colors, or to dye, to heat set it. So the problem is that they're so warm. Shoot, we may just need to wait a couple hours to let it cool before we go ahead and do that. All right, now I have transferred some of the yarn into other containers to finish cooling. We can reuse these jars. And so our number six is gonna go into the jar I have labeled one carefully. to the best of our ability to not make a mess. Spilled a little bit, but ultimately not that much. Okay, and then three, we'll have our number seven. There we go. Not so bad, just a little bit of spilling. And then the one labeled four, we'll have our number eight, this brightest, yellow green I think I'm gonna press some out I think that a lot of yellows head and strike uh, right away and some of these blues are taking longer but now I'm gonna go and heat set all of the rest of these colors uh, and yeah I'm gonna make sure that they heat for at least 30 minutes we already have increased vinegar in here and I'll be back when it's time to start washing things but I am going to replace the water in that pot to make sure we're starting cool so we don't risk cracking any of these containers. It's a couple days later, yep. And here are all of the greens. There are a lot that are quite similar, but we'll see what differences we have while they are dry. So I think I'm gonna wash them each individually so that way I can try to keep track. We've got one through four and then five through eight so I can keep track of which the different colors are so we can talk about the combinations at the end of the video. But I'm gonna go ahead and watch this one because it has that uh, turquoise blue and so we can see if this one bleeds. Because if this doesn't bleed, 
then none of the rest will likely bleed. Of course, if any of the others do, I can pop in and show you. But let's start with number two. So first, let's remove the water from here. Because I'm curious, I see like a hint of blue. Yeah, there's definitely some blue in there. But now I'm trying to get the roving out without squishing it. Uh, and now I'm gonna fill this up with water and we're gonna go ahead and use a little bit of some clear dish soap. The soap may have been a little bit of a mistake just because, yeah, I am seeing a tiny bit of bleeding, but given that we had some blue left, uh, I'm not surprised. What I think is gonna be beautiful, yeah, we absolutely have breaking here. We have a beautiful bright green, but there are also patches that are more turquoise leaning. I think those yellows we had struck really fast and then the blues have taken a, a, a bit more time. So I'm gonna gently compress it on the side, try not to rub, to rinse out that turquoise color. And now we're gonna fill this up again. I really like this color here. Let's see, I'm trying to be very gentle. And that is already a lot better. There's still some blue in there, but not so bad. Uh, when it comes to roving, if there is a light amount of bleeding, sometimes I'm tempted to let it be and then rinse a lot more thoroughly once I wash it. But overall, I definitely want to try to remove as much excess color as I possibly can. Okay, let's see how oh, the water is cold. Okay, that's looking really clear. All right, not so bad. I'm gonna soak it in here for a minute and then carefully go and transfer it to my spin dryer to remove a lot of the water before hanging it up to dry. But it's very, very pretty. For good measure, let's look at sample one as well. And I'm totally gonna have to check the footage. <laughs> it's hard to get it out to see which color mixture this one was. But, ooh, this is a much like deeper green. I'm curious if we'll see differences in undertone with these various colors. But right now I'm not seeing, maybe I'm seeing a little bit of just some, yellowish color come out, which could be the color of some wool, but let's add like a tiny bit of dish soap. Well, you're now all sudsy and trying to tell, there might be like a hint of something, but not nearly as much as what we saw with the blue. So I am going to go ahead and rinse out all of this soap and then we will put this through the spin dryer and hang it up to dry. It's very possible that the reason why there's a bit of residual dye is that the one ounce of roving is pretty crowded in these jars. There's not a lot of space for things to move around so there is a chance of some undissolved color but I'm not seeing any more color in this water. So I will go ahead and wash everything else off camera. I expect that anything with the turquoise will probably bleed a bit and then resolve like we saw with the last one, thank goodness. And then the others or the ones with less turquoise will be a little bit more like this one. So that is my assumption. But now let's go see the finished dry colors. Here is just a quick snapshot of the fiber as it is drying. And I'm happy to say that there are some more uh, subtle and sometimes distinct differences between the different greens, which I'm happy to see now that we've removed the fiber from the containers because some of those softer differences weren't immediately obvious. But let's take a closer look. Here are the eight different green colors that we created with mixing Paradise Fibers acid dyes. With these first six colors, editing Rebecca here, when I set up these six, I mixed up the blue plus soft yellow plus the green plus soft yellow. Basically, when I had first numbered the containers, I did one, two, three, four, five, six. And, and then when I laid it out, I did one, two, three, four, five, six. So the numbers on them were correct, but I forgot which number corresponded to which formula. So I will pop up the formulas 
that I used on the screen multiple times uh, to hopefully help make that clear. And so when I talk about it, I might be mixing up what I say they are. We started mixing six different colors using one-to-one -one ratios of a yellow with a blue or green. And so we used blue, turquoise, and then green, which really is much more of a teal color. And then in the rose, we did yellow and then soft yellow. Now of these six samples, the different yellows made the least difference when mixed with the blue. Samples one and four are the most similar to one another. And because there's variation in the depth of shade, they are fairly difficult to tell apart. But you can see more of a difference from the more orange of the soft yellow when it comes to mixing with the green or with the turquoise. And the turquoise and yellows broke really brilliantly in a very, very amazing, pretty way. I was definitely surprised with how deep those four colors were. I don't think I was expecting it to come like the purest medium green, but all of these colors lean very blue still. Even this one, which definitely has more yellow to it, is more mossy, they still all feel very, very blue. Therefore, we mixed two additional colors, and I'm gonna pop the recipes or approximate recipes on the screen right now. But the big difference is we used a lot more yellow than blue. And these ratios are something that I knew from other color mixing exercises that I had done. I knew that in general, when playing with primary dye colors, blues and reds are a lot more pigmented than yellow. So if you want to create a color that feels like it fits in the middle of a yellow and blue, you need way more yellow than blue to bring you there. And to get something that feels like a more yellow green, I think that you only need a hint of blue to start changing that yellow into a green. The Paradise Fibers Undyed Merino Wool tied so beautifully. It is so fluffy and I think that all of these colors could be combined to create some really fun yarn. Whether you want to blend them together in some kind of way or combine them directly when spinning, I think that even with some of the similarities, it's a very fun set. Jeremy, thank you again for being my lab partner for this episode of Dye Putt Weekly. I know you just got your spinning wheel and I'm really excited for you to get your fiber to play around with. There's a lot that you can do from using these to create a subtle self-striping or gradient yarn to blending them together a bit to make more of a subtle tonal green or even combining this green with other fiber all together as you're spinning. I hope you have so much fun. Spinning is a wonderful, wonderful new color adventure and I'm so excited for you. Jeremy, thank you so much. I am very excited by the variation that there are in the breaking that we saw with these colors. And although uh, that turquoise seemed to behave a little difficultly, that is my experience with turquoise dyes across multiple brands, whether we're using an acid dye line or even a fiber reactive dye line. I think it is just the nature of that bright blue color. And because this fiber is non-superwash, that means that it probably needs more acid and time to help those blues set. But I am happy we were able to get the water to run clear when we were rinsing, and so we ended up with some really glorious colors. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you would like to see me dye more unspun fiber, please let me know in the comments below. I always get a little nervous when I'm dyeing roving, even though I've dyed a fair amount so far. There is a whole playlist but I'm always worried that I'm going to felt it. And really, that is the worst case scenario, that the fiber ends up really felted and you can't spin it. And so while I am often feeling very, very nervous about it, I should just play with it more because the more you try something, the more comfortable you start to feel. Please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. It's the biggest way that you can help support the content here on this channel. And if you want other ways to help support Chemnitz, uh, I do have a Patreon and an Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations. You can find links to everything down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.